I just want to take you through really some, some, some latest thinking around succession planning. Uh, this has come in the main from some research that we've been doing at, at, at Henley, but it's got a, a lot of uh, relevance to the type of work that we do here at, uh, at Headlight. I want to frame this really about how we, how we move succession planning from the situation we're in now to something which is much more, much better aligned to the way that uh, talent these days thinks, thinks about careers. Um, I wanted to talk uh, just a little bit about uh, the, the background here. So th this, is, this is research that we in the HR Centre do every year. We uh, talk to a number of different organisations. We base a lot of our, our work around research and, and, and consulting. We did some talent management um, research just, just recently. There were some interesting um, trends coming out of it, really almost like a trend of trends. And I just want to take you through what some of those are and, and why I think they're important for all people processes, actually. But I'm going to focus on, on uh, succession planning as one of the key processes there. The, the key thread here is really that talent is beginning to exhibit consumer behaviors, rather like you or I when we, uh, when we shop in the retail world. And this has been driven by a number of different trends and factors, which individually paint a, a direction. But when you look at them all together, uh, what I think it shows is, is, is a macro trend of, of really significant proportions. The first of these trends really is, is just about the market itself. <coughs> Those of us who've um, been in the talent game for a while, as, as, as you know, I've run uh, talent management in, in, in several large organizations in my time. Um, I used to that, that pendulum between employee-centric markets and employer-centric markets in terms of the balance of power, if you like. Um, typically, every five years, it would switch one way or the other. I think what we've seen and what a lot of organizations are reporting now is post-recession that it's flicked across to the employee-centric market. So in other words, uh, those with skills we need in our organizations know that they have them and are uh, and, and really not afraid to use their, uh, their, their, their power, their consumer power in that, in that regard. So I think we've seen it flick across and perhaps uh, not flick back. So we might be stuck with a, a, an employee-centric market for, uh, for some time now. But that's not the only trend. I mean, the, the, the one that goes hand in hand with this is the rise in uh, portfolio career thinking. Now, this is something which we uh, probably attended many conferences and talked about. We, uh, but have we really thought through how it interacts with some of these other trends? So portfolio thinking, if you've, if you've not come across it before, is where we're really thinking about our career as a number of different constituent parts, which together create almost a recipe that, uh, that, that builds our brand, builds our market cap. Uh, and as such, we might be looking to acquire a large number of smaller experiences rather than perhaps stay in, in one organization for a very long time. That itself then is complemented and reinforced by a situation where perhaps barriers to moving employer are lower than they've been for many, many years. I had a, a group of resourcing directors in a room recently. I was talking to them about what they thought was a minimum tenure, if you like, in an organization or on a CV before they began to get a little bit twitchy and want to ask questions. And they pretty much unanimously said, said two years. Uh, in fact, some said 18 months. So I think we're seeing this acceptance that people are moving around uh, more frequently and that that not just doesn't damage their CV, it actually enhances their CV in, in many ways. When we talk about skills shortages as well, I think it's, it's true to say that there's a lot of press about this. In some industries, this is really quite severe. So if I were to look at engineering, for example, um, big companies talking about how talent shortages, uh, engineers in Europe, for example, are their number one strategic issue. Um, I was working with a chemical business recently whose who's, who's current open vacancy list for chemical engineers exceeds the global supply of chemical engineers coming out of, out of universities and schools. Uh, but it's not just limited to, to engineering. There are many, uh, many skills areas which, which are in relatively short supply versus a demand. Digital skills uh, in particular at the moment, a lot of organizations are going to catch a bit of a cold when I think they realize the competitive nature of the marketplace around those skills. So we've talked about portfolio career, we've talked about skills shortages, we've talked about employee-centric markets. Um, another thing to throw into the mix here is, is the gradual rise in awareness of brand, personal brand, 
uh, amongst talent. And this, again, really takes us much more into that consumer space. So people, and this is not limited, by the way, to younger generations coming into the workplace. This is something we're seeing at, at, at all age demographics, uh, all levels of experience, where people can see that the skills that they have are in short demand, um, short supply, sorry. Um, personal brand equity in terms of the makeup of a CV, in terms of the type of skills that one has acquired. And we're seeing people really trying to engineer uh, a certain look and feel to their CVs, and, and along with these lower barriers to, uh, to moving employment, you can see how this is beginning to fuel uh, what is, in effect, a more discretionary relationship uh, with an employer. We, at the same time in organisations, are fueling this, are, are throwing gasoline on the fire, if you like, by pushing career management more and more into the hands of the individual employee, talking about giving them more choice, more empowerment, really requiring them to manage their career much more. And of course they are. Uh, the question is, are we really prepared for, for what that means? Are we, uh, are we in danger of uh, getting exactly what we, what we wish, but perhaps regretting it afterwards? And, and this discretionary relationship that's resulting is, is less in the old fashioned master and servant mold, and much more in, in the phrase that's being used is a, an exchange of mutual value. So you've got individuals with particular skills who know their worth effectively lending them to an organization as long as they're getting back from that organization what they what they want and when that discretionary relationship breaks down in in either direction the lower barriers to moving employment mean that it's much easier for people to to move on and and and, and go and collect what uh, what one hr leader recently described to me as uh, uh, the next scout badge in terms of their career. So you've got a whole host of, uh, of issues working together here. And if that weren't already enough, this is catalyzed and speeded up and absolutely taken into hyperdrive by the digital enablement that we have now, the use of social media to communicate widely and, and instantaneously, uh, uh, employer review sites, um, you're talking, we're talking about career networking sites, the ability to communicate around potential new roles, to talk about what we think of employers, is, is, it just escalated enormously. So when we throw all of these individual factors, which, which even on their own would point in this direction, when we throw them all together, it makes a very, very powerful argument that there is a, an outbreak of consumerism in the talent market that actually what we have here are a group of, of career consumers who behave in very similar ways to you or I when we shop in the retail world. There's a, there's a question around loyalty can't be taken for granted. We can take our business elsewhere. We know what we're worth. We, we want a good deal. We can negotiate. We can haggle. And actually, we can take our business someplace else. So this is really a, the, the, the backdrop, which is fueling, I think, a, a question for HR functions in, in any organization, in, in any sector. And the question is, to what degree are the people processes that we have, whether it's succession planning, performance management, talent approaches, recruitment approaches, engagement management approaches, to what degree are they based or able to be based on this kind of model? And to what degree are they based on outmoded fundamental assumptions, such as a one career, sorry, a one company career? Uh, or uh, an assumption around tenure in an organization which may be uh, much greater than, than will actually be the fact. Mm -hmm.